Your Eminence, Metropolitans, Your Graces, dear clergy, and all sisters and brothers in Christ. Good morning, everyone. What an incredible honor it is for me to introduce our next speaker. So he can share his book, which was a number one bestseller in seven countries in 2019, about his living in 12 cities in 12 months on four continents. Thank you. I want to take you on a trip around the world, a modern day odyssey by a guy named Phil Nicosesis, not Odysseus, but it's a modern day odyssey where I lived in 12 cities in 12 months, in 10 countries, on four continents, with 48 other people who were strangers on day one, who were strangers on day one, and them like me, ran their businesses and held their jobs from their smartphone and their laptop. Welcome to Have Laptop, Will Travel, 12 Cities, 12 Months, Memoirs of a Digital Nomad. My memoir is, was, uh, has been number one in seven countries, number one in several categories, including number one in sales in the business travel category. Thank you. They say that writing a book is the hardest thing and the closest that a man will come to childbirth. It should come as no surprise, therefore, that I dedicated my book to my parents. I read the audiobook in my own voice for nine hours. And it took many more hours after that to produce it to where it is now on, um, on Audible. They say that travel is the only thing you buy that makes you richer. When you live in a city for a month at a time, you actually begin to feel like a resident and not a tourist. And last but not least, I use the platform of where many places that I lived around the world to share the vegan message with uh, formal presentations, somewhat like I'm doing now, and I hope perhaps next year that Leadership 100 would have me back to talk about the benefits of a plant-based diet and the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle. The last two years or so, I've been to 16 countries sharing the vegan message, telling people that it's not just about our physical health, it's really not about us, but it also our mental health is affected, our spiritual health is affected, our societal health, the very institution of war, actually was started over the fight over animals. So where, pray tell, did remote year take us? The itinerary was etched in stone. We started out in split Croatia, then we went to Prague, Czech Republic, then Lisbon, Portugal, then we went to Asia, Kyoto, Japan, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and then six months in South America and North America, Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina, Cordoba, Argentina, Lima, Peru, Medellin and Bogota, Colombia, and finally we adjourned in Ciudad de Mexico, Mexico City. And the first stop was Kyoto, Japan. And for the first time, I discovered a culture that was almost perfect. Basically, honor, respect, punctuality, perfect, uh, perfection. Everything was done on time, perfectly, with no drama, and also non-confrontation is a big thing for them. I always looked for the deeper meaning of things, but I think you'll also get the feeling that the deeper meaning of things found me as the chapters and the months go on. Okay. This really does signify to me a, an improvement. Remember we talked about we're living in the age of abundance and we don't realize it because we like to complain a lot no matter where we are on the economic scale. I think we're still born to complain as, a, as the human condition for some reason. And out of nowhere, we get uh, the call from the United States Embassy. And we were, the three of us, two of my remote year colleagues and myself, we're invited to a panel on American entrepreneurism. There's segues, little boxes, that take you out of the story, and they are, uh, include no filter, fill facts, and fill feelings. The nice thing about traveling and experiencing other cultures is this thing called, what I call, what we call a culturalization. So bring it home. When you go to the restroom in these places, you take off the slippers they gave you and you put on the slippers for the restroom. This is the Wildflower Home. It's a shelter for young mothers. 
And the way that they wind up there is because they get kicked out of the village. Not because, not because they're unwed and it's embarrassing, but it's actually superstitious reasons. The village heads believe that it it's, would bring an unlucky situation, maybe have a bad harvest. So they get kicked out and they go to the wildflower home. And so I noticed that they were uh, cooking some of their food. And I said, well, they were cooking the mung beans. And at Hippocrates Health Institute, which is just 11 miles away from here, they tell us that, uh, that you shouldn't cook the food. Now, I'm a vegan, not a saint, so I do eat some cooked food. And, you know, but without, ex- without exception, though, when you cook the food, you kill the nutrition. And also understand that we are the only life form out of 8 million life forms that cooks their food. It's just kind of strange. But we do it. And the head nun, I think, picked up on the idea that it was definitely cheap and that they could have nutritious food for the children. And so I got an instant message from one of the staff there showing a picture of the sprouts. And uh, you can see I I, uh, replied there, I'm so happy about this, you have no idea. So as a businessman, I've built built shopping centers and uh, Walmarts and Lowe's Home Improvement and some other things. And and you could call those accomplishments. But this and some other givebacks, paying it forward, as, as they say, was some of the... It has to be one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. An ounce of experience is worth more than a ton of theories. You know, I've been in this room many times wearing a tuxedo and stroke, and you stroke a check to be here for a charity, and you give some air kisses, and everybody feels great about what they're doing, just like right now. And that's great, because organizations need money. But there's nothing like doing, there was nothing like giving the Sprout Workshop to those young mothers in Thailand. Malaysia was the month that I became a vegebrity a vegan celebrity. Um, I gave five different lectures uh, around the country, but they even flew me to uh, Kathmandu, uh, Nepal. I'm on the airplane, I'm sitting down, I'm strapped in, and the airplane is about to turn turn the curve so he can hit the jets on the straightaway. And nothing prepared me for what happened next. There was an explosion. I thought it was one of our engines. It was actually a, a plane crash a crash landing that we just missed. It was a 70, uh, 70 passenger commuter plane, 38 people perished. So now we are in month 12. We are in Ciudad de Mexico, and you can see the picture of the Mangata group, the Tramily. We went from 49 people, now we're down to about 30 people, which is understandable um, life gets in the way. Some people lost their jobs. Some people got homesick. Some people missed their girlfriend or boyfriend. Some people just didn't like it anymore. So many people live their entire life, and they're not even there. Cultures are diverse, despite globalization. I mean, just by being Greek, we understand this. We live in a culture, but the culture also lives in us. So there's a natural tension between the sovereignty of the individual and the group. Everywhere I go, people are nice. I learned that it's about the proverbial journey and not the destination. It wasn't all fun and games. There was broken bones, broken cell phones, broken promises, broken connections, broken mattresses. (laughs) It will probably take me an entire lifetime to process everything that, that happened. So whether we're here for a few decades or 12 or 14 decades, It should be celebratory, adventurous, purposeful, and meaningful. And so I wrote this book not to, not to show off and say, look at me and look at all this cool stuff I'm doing. But I want to inspire others on their life's journey. That your real life mangata, your road-like reflection on the water that's made by the moon is celebratory, Adventurous, purposeful, and extraordinary. Cape life, celebratory, adventurous, purposeful, and extraordinary. Do you have a laptop? Now you go travel. Thank you very much.